We view product launch as like a traffic source. So we know when we get in there that we can bring in, you know, anywhere from a thousand to 2,500 new customers every time we do a launch. So when we started thinking about the launches, we start, we don't look at them as like, well, how can we make the most money off of the launch? Which is what most people do. Mm -hmm. We start looking like, okay, how can we bring the most people in? And then once we have those people in, what are the things we can offer them that will help them get whatever it is they want to get, right? What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. All right, Tom. Welcome to the show, my man. Been uh, eager Aloha. to hit record. Yeah. yeah. Aloha. <laughs> You're in our favorite place, man, Maui. Yeah. Well, outside of San Diego. <laughs> hey, San, Di- San Diego is really nice. I got to go there for the first time, like couple of Octobers ago, it was great. I thought yeah. Little Italy was fantastic. Yeah. Like, yeah. what a great area. Yeah, man. Well, we, uh, there's, um, I think I emailed it to you, but remember this place called Poo Poo Lounge in Kihei in Maui? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I used to love going there, and I yeah. saw it shut down the last time I was there. I was like, no. Well, some, some <laughs> guy bought it. There's another restaurant there now. It's called, um, it's not called the Poo Poo Lounge. I forget what it's called, but there, that location is actually open. There's a new guy there. Cool. The food's pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad. I'll be back. Yeah. I'm sure others probably recognize the name or have been through there. So. I just remember they had legendary yeah. Mai Tais. That's what I remember yes. about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can't come to Maui without getting a Mai Tai. That's yeah. right, man. But yeah, we got connected and uh, in, I, I loved your story. The whole, like the Maui connection was always like, I was like, okay, cool. If you're in Maui, you're doing something cool and fun and fascinating. And you told me you're from <laughs> Oklahoma originally, right? And yep. he's right yeah. there. That's a, there's a picture of Maui oh, on the oh, wall. Oh, yeah, you have a picture of Maui over here. <laughs> That's like distracted by the talk of Maui. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious about going on back because we have so many mutual friends in this space, but we never cross paths. But you, it sounds like you kind of uprooted yourself and completely changed everything you were doing. Yeah, well... So, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm originally from Oklahoma and I was like a restaurant manager back there and I was working in the restaurant business and, uh, I had worked for a writer for a little while and that kind of got me interested in online marketing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to help him market some books online and it was really just something I kind of did on the side. And, uh, I was doing the restaurant thing full time, but I hated it. I Mm -hmm. really didn't want to do it anymore. And so when my wife and I decided to move to Maui, I thought this will be great, man. I'll just like I won't ha- like I won't have a job. I'll just go to Maui and I'll start, you know, be building my own business. And uh, so my wife is like, Tom, like you've never even been to Hawaii. <laughs> Maybe you want to have a job, like when we get there, just in case. And so <laughs> it's so funny. The Bubblegum Shrimp Company. Yep just happened to be hiring for a restaurant manager on Maui. Is that was like Lahaina so random. or something? Yep, yeah, in Lahaina, yeah. <laughs> so I did this interview over the phone in Oklahoma and like I didn't want the job. So when they asked me how much I made, I told them like 10 grand more than I made in Oklahoma. And they were like, okay, we're good with that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> You're like, so, crap. <laughs> they, uh, so I actually flew to Maui on July 4th. I did my final interview on July 6th and I started work at the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company on July 8th. Dang. So it was like, bam, bam, bam. Right. And then like eight months later, I get fired <laughs> and I'm like, now what do I do? Right. Uh-huh. Like, what am I going to do? So I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll start a business. I'll try to do some, I had worked with some local clients before. Right. And so I started trying to I was really doing everything. I was trying to make money online. I was also trying to get clients and like nothing was like, nothing was working. I was on unemployment. Um, My unemployment is about to run out. They're like, look, you can't be on here anymore. You know, you've been on here for like 51 weeks. And uh, I'm like, "Ah, what am I going to do? And uh, so I saw this guy on the mainland. He did these, um, he did these jumbo postcards and uh, here I have one. So they look like this, right? Uh And so all you do is you just go around and say, Hey, I'm going to mail this thing out. I've got seven ads on each side and you charge 500 bucks for an ad space. Hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. it was really great because I didn't need any money to do this. Right. Like I literally just went down to office max, had them make up like a laminated Mm mock-up cost me like 30 bucks. And I just started walking into businesses and uh, within seven days I had sold 16 spots. I'd made a little over seven grand, four grand of that was profit. And I told my wife, like, I'm never getting a job again. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. And oh. so 
after I did that, I saw, I came across this click funnels thing. Uh-huh. Right. And, yep. uh, Russell Brunson had this webinar and I wanted to buy click funnels. I didn't have the money. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I was trying to get this coupon thing going, but I was really like Maui's expensive. I was really struggling. So I actually borrowed the money to get a click funnels account, like wow. the year thing. And, uh, so then about a year, like as the postcards started to catch on and I started getting traction, my agency started doing, I was doing six figures in my agency and I had paid my friend back for this click funnels account, but like, I wasn't doing anything with it. So I was like, Hey, I'll just, I'll put out a product. And I made a product on how to do this postcard. Hmm. And that was the first online course I launched. And uh, for whatever reason, it, it took off. Like it just, it sold really well. And then just this past December, I got that that ClickFunnels award, the Two Comma Club award, yeah. mm-hmm. which was really crazy to me because I freaking borrowed the money <laughs> to get the software, right? Yeah. And like here Full they are circle, sending huh? me a ClickFunnels award. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a cool story, man. And and that's yeah, it's just uh, I like the scrappiness of it all, the hustle of it all, you know, and and just like the I'm going all in. So, I mean, from there though, and, and something caught our, my attention. And then I was chatting with Matt from our first conversation, how, you know, you're, you're basically doing a lot of the selling in some marketplaces that we used to hang out in like many, many, many years ago. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about the warrior form, uh, what warrior plus and, and yep. how you've done some launches there. And we're like, wait, what? Yeah. And then you kind of talked about the style of the way that you do launch things, your mindset and what happens afterwards. And we're like, okay, this is going to be an interesting conversation here. <laughs> so you're doing yeah. some different things. <laughs> well, and we were talking before we hit record too, and you you sort of uh, explained how you look at launches differently than anybody I've ever heard explain a launch. So I, I, that might be a good place to start, like how you use the launches in your sort of unique method. Sure. Like, well, I mean, first let, let's talk about Warrior Plus, and then I'll talk a little bit about that because it didn't cool. it didn't start out that way, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's listening to this, who's trying to start a business, like I'm going to talk about a lot of things we have going on in our online business. And you might be like, oh my God, that's so much. And like, how do you do that? Like, well, the way you do that is like one thing at a time. Like it's a process. I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really realize the reality of that statement, that building a big business is a process that happens over time. Mm-hmm. Like you don't just spring forth into the marketplace with a booming community and podcasts yeah. and YouTube channels. And like, like that all happens over time and it's really doing one thing at a time. Um, but Warrior Plus was a place where I bought products from. Like when I was yep. trying to figure out how to make money online, how to build an agency, a lot of people sold products about that on Warrior Plus. So I was familiar with the stuff that was sold there. Cause I was like one of the customers. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so when you're looking for where to go to like put something out, I think that's a good place to start. Like, well, where do, who do I buy my products from and where are those people? Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, one of the things that I like to tell people about that is like when you're buying products and stuff from people, like be a good customer. Mm-hmm. And that means like, if somebody comes and they buy something from you guys, right? And they ask smart questions and they talk to you, like you're going to help them because they're a customer of yours, right? And then later down the road, if they come to you and they're like, hey, I've got this thing going, you would probably at least take a look at it. Like Mm. you may not do anything with it, but you'd probably at least take a look at it, maybe offer them a little bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's kind of how you get your your, um, fingernails in the hold of the market, right? Mm. Like that's how I kind of did it. Since I had bought products from people and communicated with them with no idea that I was eventually going to do a product of my own. Mm. But when the time came, they were more than happy to support me as affiliates because they, I was a good customer of theirs. Yeah. Right. They were like, Oh yeah, this guy buys a lot of our stuff. Like anyway, so uh, that's the first thing, but warrior plus in general, like a lot of people had just kind of like written it off. Like they had sort of just, you know, a lot of people started there and they just move on. They get busy, they build bigger businesses, they just go on to other things, right? Mm-hmm. And so when we came on to Warrior Plus, it was kind of like, there really honestly wasn't a lot of people on there putting out good stuff. Like very, like <laughs> probably could count them on one hand that actually put out That's been our experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's everybody <laughs> else was pretty shady, right? And, <laughs> and I think a lot of people tend to stay away from places like JVZ warrior plus because of that. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's cause we just don't know any better or what, but we decided like, well, forget that. Like we'll just be a great vendor 
in this sea of other vendors. And like what happened was because we, because we focused on building support, because we answered people, because we, you know, did what we said we were going to do. Like we started to grow really fast on Warrior Plus because we were way different. Like I can't tell you how many emails we'd get from people that'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe you answered my support question. Huh, right? wow. like, Cause that was just the norm, right? <laughs> right? Like the norm was you send in a question or you ask for a refund and you get all kinds of pushback and flack. And, and like, we didn't do that. We were just like, Hey, you want a refund? Like, and get, here's a refund. Like yeah. there's no questions asked, none of that stuff. So you know, we built up a, a reputation real quick for being a good vendor, right? Mm. And there's a lot of great customers in those places if you're a good vendor. Mm -hmm. That's a good right? reframe. If you, yeah. If you're a good vendor, there's a lot of great customers there and a lot of great affiliates and things you can work with. So, you know, as we were doing more product launches, like what we use product launches for, and I think this is what Matt was kind of referring to is we view product launches like a traffic source. Mm -hmm. So to us, they're just like running, just like most people run Facebook ads. Like I know you guys do a, a ton of Facebook ads, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for us, the launch is our traffic source. So we know when we get in there that we can bring in, you know, anywhere from a thousand to 2,500 new customers every time we do a launch. So it's like a trap, it's a traffic source to us. So when we start thinking about the launches, we start, we don't look at them as like, well, how can we make the most money off of the launch, which is what most people do. Mm -hmm. We start looking like, okay, how can we bring the most people in? And then once we have those people in, what are the things we can offer them that will help them get whatever it is they want to get, right? Mm. Like where, where, how can we start to bring them value? And of course that entails selling them things, right? There's different things they can buy and stuff like that. So for us, the launch is two things. One, it's a traffic source. Um, and it's worked out really well for us because we don't, like, instead of having to pay for traffic, like we're getting paid, like, <laughs> even though we say we don't want to make money off the launches, like we've never had one that we haven't. You right. flip right? the so, tables completely and you have a, a the best intent, which is a buyer's intent. And you can take them on that journey from that point on. Yeah, exactly. Like our email list is not a big email list, but everybody on it is a buyer. Hmm. And they are like... Like when we, you know, support things and do promotions, like we bring some, we bring some heat because yeah. we've like, you know, we focused on building, like once the person comes in through the launch or whatever, like we do a lot of stuff. Like we have indoctrination sequences. We have a Facebook group. We're really active in there. We do a Facebook live show every week. There's a podcast, there's a YouTube channel, right? Like there's all these things to um, make them a part of the community. Hmm. Right. And so, you know, that has served us really, really well, um, especially the Facebook Live, something that we didn't really think that was cool. going to do that yeah. well. But like that thing has turned into like sometimes if we need to support someone like because they supported our launch, but we don't have time. To, like we don't want to email our list because we have something going on or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Like we can just go on the Facebook Live show and talk about the offer and we can usually make anywhere from 100 to 200 sales just off of the Facebook live show. <laughs> I love that right? because now that's that's just bolt on revenue on in a community where you're you're leading with value, you know, with this thing and and you have a pitch in there. It's like a what? Like a mini webinar in a way. Yeah, well, really the the whole Facebook live is just us hanging out talking, asking wow. questions, doing stuff, but at the end nice. we always say like, "Hey, you know, there's this thing that came out today. We wanted to bring it to your attention and yeah, so it's it's not really even a hard like we don't hard hard pitch. We just you know sometimes we bring the person that creates the product on as our guest. Mm, right? Okay, and yeah. so that's good. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. But yeah, it allows us to like one of the so the kind of dark side of doing Warrior Plus launches and this affiliate style building your business is that if people promote you, they expect you to promote them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And that can be difficult when you're trying to like, when you really start thinking about the people on your list as real people and you're really trying to help them, mm -hmm. like you don't just want to be sending every offer. Like you have to draw some lines. And if that means, you know, people aren't going to support you, you just have to be okay with that. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've sort of made that decision. Like, like, yes, we want to support everybody that supports us when it makes sense. Like, right. it's got to be a good offer. It's got to be quality. It's got to fit in with what we're doing. Um, all those kinds of things. Yeah. 
I, I want to um, get into the weeds uh, for a minute with the actual Warrior Plus stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I actually want to circle back around to the Facebook Live stuff because I think there's a lot there that uh, I think would be really interesting to dissect. I know it's not something we yeah. talked about going down that <laughs> path, but now I'm fascinated. So I need to hear more. Um, but going back to the Warrior Plus thing, like how does it look these days? Do you, I, from what I remember with the Warrior Forum, they had like the WSO area, right? And you would pay. I don't know, 50 bucks or something like that to to post it. And then when new posts sort of pushed it down, then you could pay to boost it back to the top, right? Is it Does it still kind of work the same? I'm just kind of curious about how that all works behind the scenes a little bit. Yeah, no, it's all that stuff is gone. So really what happens with Warrior Plus is you're just doing affiliate roundup, right? Mm. So there's no more posts on the Warrior Forum or anything like that. Like, people will just go right to your sales page or whatever page you have as the beginning of your offer. Gotcha. So when you add your products and stuff in the back of Warrior Plus, like they start showing up in the marketplace where affiliates go and look for things to promote, mm-hmm. right? Gotcha. Um, really, I think that best way to kind of break into that is, uh, like I said, be a good customer of other people, right? But you do have to like, you do have to reach out to affiliates. Like it's not, you can't just make a post like in the old days and be like, just let it run. Like you have to at least line up one or two people to promote what you're doing. The Mm. interesting thing is, is if you get a couple of just okay affiliates and your offer starts making sales, uh, other affiliates will just come on. Cause Mm. one of the nice things about Warrior Plus is they have like a top sellers list, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. And if your offer is doing good and it's resonating with people, like you'll start to climb up that list and other affiliates will jump in and Mm. things like that. But you do you do have to cultivate those relationships, like reach out to people and be like, hey, you know, I have an offer coming out. And I don't care what people say. Like, that's hard to do in the beginning when you don't have any traction. Right. Oh, yeah. Like unproven. Once offer. you can yeah. once you can support somebody and show them that you can generate some sales, it changes the whole ball game. Right. But it's a struggle in the like you just have to keep at it, keep at it until somebody breaks and says, OK, I'll help you out. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> and like, and keep maybe, asking, yeah. giving away a lot of yeah. free product, like asking for a lot of intros. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, hey, check out this. Here's access. Like, what, you know, what can I do? What can I do to help you that you would yeah. help me type yeah. of a thing? I think one yeah, of the so, things I remember about like doing a lot of uh, Warrior Plus type stuff back in the day was how many messages I would get from people asking for review copies so that they can become <laughs> affiliates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, and like 99% of them never actually turned into affiliates. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like any marketplace, like, you know, Warrior Plus is just one. There's also JVZoo, there's also ClickBank. Like, what I would do if I were trying to, if I were back in the beginning going to break in, you know, I would go into those marketplaces and I would look every day at uh, who's launching what mm. and how those products are doing. Because all of those places, ClickBanks, JVZoo, Warrior Plus, all have a place where you can go and see who's selling what and how it's doing, like what the best sellers are for the day, the week, the last 30 days. I would just start looking to see like, okay, well, what are those offers? Like, what are the things that seem to be resonating with buyers in this Like, cause then you'll know what people are willing to promote, Mm -hmm. right? Like these offers are obviously resonating. Another little good secret thing. I hope my business partner doesn't mind that I share this, but another little secret thing is (laughs) every, everybody runs affiliate contests, right? They'll give away money. So in the warrior plus you can see those leaderboards, Mm. even if you're not an affiliate. I like it. So (laughs) you can go and look at somebody's offering and go look at their contests Cause you'll see who, who is promoting their offer. And if you have an offer that is similar or you think resonates well with that, then you might want to reach out to those people on their leaderboard. Mm-hmm. Right. And be like, Hey, I have this offer. I think it'd be a good fit for you. That type of thing. So I that's another it. little trick you can use, yeah. not just looking at the offers and stuff, but also look at the affiliate contest leaderboard, see who's on there, yeah. like who are the movers and shakers. And then if you don't know those people, do you know anybody that may know them? Like we, you know, we did a lot of, um, in the beginning, uh, we just worked with small affiliates, but as we were working with small affiliates, like we would see, like, there'd be a small affiliate over here, but they would know a big affiliate. Yeah. So we did some strategic deals with those small affiliates because we knew they knew the big affiliate. Hmm. And what that did was put us on the big affiliates radar. Yep. They were like, Oh, I saw you did this thing with this person over here that I know, you know? And so that was, another little strategy we use to build up our 
our base of people that promote. Super smart, man. I mean, that's something yeah. that everyone can do. And and I don't think we've been in those communities or those marketplaces like ClickBank and, and like you said, JVZoo and all, Warrior Plus in a long time. But there's so much public data out there that gives you at least a focus of where you kind of should start with. Mm -hmm. You know, even with a new product, it's probably great for researching and you're like, oh, that's it is. A you can <laughs> crappy offer. Yeah. I could do better than that. <laughs> or, you know, yeah, like, well, or you you can just see what people are buying. Sure. Right. Yeah. Like, like this is what Gold. people are buying. Like the people in the that buy products in those places are no different from the people everywhere else. Right. Right. Like there's yeah. still people. There's still human nature. There's so you can oftentimes see like what you know what things in the headlines are the most appealing. Like what angles seem to be working the best. Mm -hmm. Like there, it's pretty. Um, all that information is there. Right. Super when you smart. do that, mm -hmm. the thing with, you know, the other thing about the affiliate stuff, though, I think, and this is, is really important for us is like, you just have to make a decision like to run your business in an ethical way. And then regardless of what everyone else does around you, you just have to try not to let that get to you mm. and just continue to run your business in an ethical way. And if that means not doing business with people that you really want to do business with, you just got to freaking bite the bullet and not do it because mm. um, there are a lot of shady people in that space. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, we conduct ourselves in a certain way and we expect people to do that same thing to us. And when they don't, we're pretty, we're pretty clear about like, Hey, like this isn't, this isn't cool. Like yeah. that's not how we run our business. And you know, so it's perfect, I think that's man. important. Right. Yeah. And it can be, it can get frustrating sometimes, but <laughs> You got to yeah. run your own race. You know, it's it's almost like you play in the blinders, you know, your own blinders. But like you're there for a reason because you can stand out with quality and you're actually treating people as humans and not just, yeah. you know, churn and burn the list and on to the next promotion, which. Yeah, is, well, you don't you don't want to do those kinds of things. And as you grow, the bigger you get it, it's obviously easier to do that. Right. Because oh, yeah. people start to see. And, yeah. yeah, they're yeah. like, OK, you know. Yeah. Like if, you know, Russell Brunson comes knocking on your door and says, I want to promote your stuff. You're not going to be like, no. Yeah, right? so exactly. be like, okay, what do I need to do? Right. I like, was just going to say, what do I got to do for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want? Like, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it does help as you grow and get bigger. Yeah. But uh, it's still possible to do all that stuff in the beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, are, are you just taking the products and putting them on all the platforms? So if you have a, a new uh, launch you're doing, you put it on Warrior Plus, JVZoo, ClickBank and just spread the, you know, spread the deck, widen the net. <laughs> Yeah, no, we just do we just do ours on Warrior Plus. So okay. Warrior Plus has kind of a little more of a built-in mark. So like our courses and products are mainly aimed at uh, people that are trying to build a digital agency. Mm -hmm. They're freelancers. They're like website designers, SEOs, social media. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have an agency here that we help local businesses with in Hawaii. So a lot of the courses we put out are courses on how we're growing our agency, how we're doing that stuff. Like we're teaching them what we're doing there. Hmm. So Warrior Plus is just kind of a, a good place for that market. It just tends to do better. Mm -hmm. um, JVZoo, more recently, it's been really, really good there if you have a software. Right. And the software is something you can use to get paid by helping local businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, but they're more of a like software focus. Like it's harder to do a good launch on JVZoo if you don't have software. That's just what the affiliates there promote, what the market's used to buying. Hmm. Um, there's also differences in pricing and the way things are structured. So, you know, we just do one, we just pick one. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do Warrior Plus, we just pick Warrior Plus, right? Because we know kind of like what the, you know, what the, you know, like our front end offers, like we know $27 is a good price point for a front end offer. Mm -hmm. Now on JVZoo, that's really low. Like yeah. JVZoo, because you're running with software, you might want to run 47 or 37, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you're offering, what you're doing, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Now, I do want to come back to the the live stream thing, the Facebook lives that you're you're doing. You know, how did how did that get started up and, you know, what what was the thinking behind doing that? You know, why why did that enter the your your business ecosystem? Well, so with the live streams, so we're always looking for ways like how like how can we bring people into a community, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't really want to like we want that. We want a we want people to be excited to be a part of what we're doing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so very early on when we were starting our first products, like we started a Facebook group. Um, 
One of the things with that though is, and I think this is why so many people struggle with Facebook groups and stuff like that is because they're a freaking lot of work. Mm-hmm. They are. Like, yeah, people don't realize that when you start a community, you're like, oh yeah. You think, yeah, you're like, oh, I'll just make this group. Everybody's going to come in. They're going to start doing their thing. Like, I'll just be so hands off. Like, it is not like that at all. Like, it takes a dedicated person or two to be posting content in there, to be responding to posts, to be generating the activity, right? So, you know, we spent a lot of time in the beginning doing those things because we knew like if people came in and they they didn't feel like it was a great place to learn, like they would just, you know, they would go and like we'd be starting from zero the next time we did a product launch. And like, we didn't want to do that, right? Like we wanted to, we wanted to build something where, look, if somebody buys one thing from us, they'll want to buy the next thing or the next thing or, mm. or whatever that is, right? So the Facebook group was kind of the start of that. And then as we started to grow, we were like, hey, you know, what else can we do? And we had this idea of doing this Facebook live show. And so we really just like we set a time. um, It's like Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern. And so like we were doing it before the pandemic, right? Like Uh we just kind of started to do it. We're doing it every week. Honestly, we weren't getting much traction. Like we maybe had 30, 40 people there, 50 Mm -hmm. people, whatever. Then the pandemic hits. Oh yeah. And like on a Friday, we've got like 350 people on a Facebook live, like more people than were showing up for webinars because what were they going to do? And so when we saw that, we were like, oh man, like there's something here, but how can we make sure to keep this going once the pandemic's over? Mm -hmm. Right. So we started thinking about like, what can we do? Like what would make this show fun? So you know, we have like, we started developing segments. So we do, so our company's called Offline Sharks, right? Mm-hmm. So this is another little tip. So that name, which we like struggle with all the time is so crazy because people love the shark side of it. So like people in our group are always like, oh, fins up, uh-huh. like the sharks are hungry. Like I found this shirt online and people are always like, oh my God, that shirt is so great. That's and what I was everybody. wondering. I was like, is that yours yeah. or? <laughs> no, it's not ours. Yeah. It was just a workout one of them, but I was like, this is so perfect. But people <laughs> post shark memes in our group. Like they have all, like they really get behind this idea of being a, a shark, right? Like mm-hmm. not a shark, like in a bad way, but just like being a part of the sharks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we do these, we started these things called shark shout outs. Okay. So at the beginning of every Facebook live show, we we celebrate people that posted their wins in the Facebook group from the week before. And for us, like that's people that are getting clients that are closing deals. And so every week, you know, we have four, five, six, seven, eight people that have closed deals the week before that we're shouting out to. And uh, in the beginning, it was just like, hey, finding their posts and saying, like, that's great. This is what we're doing. Now yeah. what we do is like we make a graphic and we make a post in the Facebook group on Fridays. And like when we're on the live, we tell everybody to go to the post and leave comments, congratulating all the shout out members. Nice. We still shout them out on the show, but now we got all this engagement on this post. At the end of the show, we go through everybody that left a comment and like we give out $25 in cash app money to two or three people. Hmm. Like we have a money giveaway. So we've got this theme song that goes with the money giveaway. <laughs> it's like, it's all crazy now, right? So. That's one thing we started a section, like what's Tom reading where every week I read a book and then I talk about the book. Right. Um, We have a section that's like a Q and a we've got a member of the week. So we do a member of the week. So we just call somebody out for being super active in our Facebook group. We send them some special offline shark swag, right? Like, and they always post pictures in the group. So you know, we do a lot of stuff like that on the Facebook live, right? Like just getting people, pumped up excited you know we call it because we're in maui we call it the aloha friday marketing jam session Mm -hmm. and people can come and ask questions and right like so it's really just a great place for them to come and just kind of hang out and and uh and find out what's going on like we talk about stuff that's happening in our agency Hmm. like successes we've had we even talk about crappy things that happened to us like you know we <laughs> you sound like matt and i on like, this <laughs> yeah we talk well, like so we talk about the good the bad the ugly like we just try to be um we just try to be authentic with them right yeah. 
And uh, that really resonates. Dude, so. It's your people too. And they're all, you know, those are all customers of yours. But the point is they're all people and they're following you on your journey and you're helping them on theirs. Yeah. But you're yep. like doing such, you're, you're like a creator, like going to YouTube, like, you know, kind of going down that rabbit hole. You were way deeper right now. <laughs> um, but like, it's yeah. a lot of that. Like, yeah, you, you know, that's, that's a part of it. You're, you have a show and what a cool way to use that show just to your customers on Facebook lives too. Yeah. And, and this all in a Facebook group. That's where it lives. Yep. It's all, it all happens in the Facebook group. We tried for a while to like, we were streaming it to different things. Like we were streaming it to YouTube and some other places, but we decided we wanted the engagement inside the group. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do a lot of, there's a post in the group, go there, leave a comment, do this kind of stuff. Right. Um, the, the shout outs have been a real big hit with people. And it also too, like, you know, there's something I think to be said for, uh, you know, when I put out my first product, like I think one of the things that resonated with people was that I, wa I wasn't a slick product <laughs> marketing creator. Like I was this guy who was like, I got a wife, I got two kids and I did this thing with this postcard. I wasn't talking about making millions of dollars. I was just talking about how I just made a couple of thousand dollars, right? Like, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people would think not to do something like that because they'd think, oh, nobody's going to buy that. Sure. Yeah. I would argue that people resonate more with those small wins because it's like, they look at that and they go, like, I always thought people looked at my first sales video, which is so crappy. And they just <laughs> went, oh man, if this schmuck can do it, <laughs> like I can do it. So I might as well buy this thing, right? That's like, right, yeah. I almost want them to have that kind of, feeling because I am just an average guy. Like there's nothing special about me nothing, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you know, if you, you don't have to be the big marketing guru expert. If you have something that works and you feel confident, it can help people, then you just show it. Right. And the Facebook live is another way to do that because I, I, sometimes people come in our group and it's one thing when they see Nick and myself having success. Cause they just think, Oh, well, of course, like you guys are the, mm. you're the experts. Of course <laughs> you're going to have success. Yeah. But when they see, you know, Jocelyn and Jacqueline and Dorn and um, Randy and all the people that they see commenting in the Facebook group talking about the fifteen hundred deal they close, fifteen hundred dollar deal they closed, the four thousand dollar website thing they got, mm. the like, hey, I tried this service and I got a client for eight hundred bucks a month. Like when they see that, it all becomes like real. Like they go, yeah. oh man, maybe I can do this, right? Like, and so, and it's really awesome to see people go through that that transition of mm -hmm. like, you just see them in the group and then all of a sudden they're like, I got my first client and they're so excited and we're excited for them. And that's like, the best great. way, man. Yeah. It's just get the whole group together. And then it's like, everybody's mom yeah, momentum is growing together in unison and you're sparking yeah. that every single week. I mean, I just love the, the whole idea of a, a mm -hmm. weekly show, yeah. which I mean, you're doing all these other things, but like, it's very, it's very purposeful. You have it organized and like, you're doing some very unique stuff. I love the cash giveaways to yeah. incentivize interactions too. It's like, come on. <laughs> oh yeah. We have this graphic that play, we have, we play this song that, uh, money 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 and we've got this graphic of a shark and dollar bills it's it's really like it's we tried it like we thought oh man this song is so corny so we stopped doing it and like people are like where's the money song <laughs> like they totally dug it they were like where's the money song what are you guys doing right. we're like, oh, okay. yeah we have we have similar stories with our own brand we actually have a like beatbox at the beginning of the show we took it out for like three episodes and we had a bunch of people tell us what happened to the beatboxing we're like <laughs> what's going on we were trying to be more professional they're like no stop that <laughs> stop being pros <laughs> yeah man. exactly i just love this uh this was totally like a different direction than we even planned on going i think <laughs> yeah, do our shows ever go in yeah. the direction no. we're planning on taking up? <laughs> <laughs> but i like it man i mean like you you basically showed from starting from nothing but how anyone can really take this journey or any journey they want to go on but like there are unique marketplaces in place to look for data there's ways to launch something initially and i love the whole launch thing of like hey get paid for your launch but mm -hmm. actually, like you're cultivating a buying community and this bond with people in a way that most people never get, and then now you have a way to engage them and um, you know keep that momentum going and sell them more stuff along the journey and what they need. Uh, I know there's a whole <laughs> the milk it method. It might be even too late to even get oh. into that now. We've kind of like bounced around, <laughs> and but I think we've yeah. already talked about elements of the we milk have. it method and what we did. Yeah. We, yeah, we talked a lot about it. I, you know, but, I would say a couple of things are like, you know. A lot of people, I think, try to, 
like the way we've been able to build and grow the, what we did is just by trying stuff and then refining it and trying different things and refining it. It's again, like I said in the beginning, it's a process, right? Like yeah. I think too many people come to, they get to this place where they want to make money online and they just, they still live in the fantasy mm. that there's some idea hack software that they can just sit around and do nothing and make money. Yep. My experience, and I don't know what your guys' experience is, but my experience has been that does not exist. It does not. So you just have to get over that and be prepared to just put in the work, right? Like we spent lots of, I mean, we spent a lot of time creating content and doing stuff when really nobody was listening, mm -hmm. but we just kept doing it anyway, right? We just kept doing it. Yeah. Um, so I would say that to people that are thinking about doing this, like, you know, just be an authentic person, be a good, be a good person, try to do something and, mm. uh, you know, like if it doesn't work, just keep trying other stuff. Yeah. Right? Like don't give up. Don't stop. Now yeah. I'm curious with the Facebook lives. Are you, every time you go live, do you mail the list? Do you do anything to let people know? Or is it just kind of so organic that everybody knows it's happening? So people pop on every Friday. No, we do. We mail them. We let them know like, Hey, the Facebook lives today, the live starting, um, you know, when, when, when many, when, when the, uh, chat bots were like, really good like oh, i yeah. don't know what facebook did they changed the chat box and like but when we were able to use our chat bot and run people that was really really powerful with those events yeah um but i think part of it is like the thing with stuff like that and you guys know this from doing a podcast it's all about consi it's really not so much about having the best content it's about consistency always yeah. like if you can just show up like you just have to make that decision that like no matter what on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern, we're doing this live show. Like if you start it and then like the third week, you're like, oh, I'm busy. Mm. You know, we'll just postpone this week. Like, oh, maybe we'll do it on Tuesday. Like you can't get your, your people have no consistency. So the fact that we've been doing it now for over a year, every Friday at 3 p.m. and it doesn't change, it doesn't go away. Like that just bring, like people just know to be there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what are you going to do? Uh, so I'm thinking and this is maybe you have a solution for this. But like if you do want to travel or go away for a Friday, so I'm thinking for podcasting, we batch record and, you know, all of that stuff is super important to get ahead. Do you have um, some some plans? So if like you did want to go away somewhere on a Friday? Yeah, I mean, we you know, there's two of us. Right. So sometimes like I've done the live show by myself when uh, ah, Nick okay. had something to do. He's done it by himself. Yeah, we always have that option. Right. I think once you have some consistency, if there really was an emergency and we weren't there for a Friday, Nobody, it wouldn't be yeah. the end of the world, right? But yeah. as long as we're not doing that often, right? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, and I don't know if we we may have we may have not done it one Friday. I can't remember if it was a hot like people understand when it's holidays and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and I throw that out there mainly is that is like an objection or one of those stopping points that people have sometimes when wanting to do something like this. It's like, but yeah. what if it's like, let's just, just get the ball moving, you know, and there are ways around it, but um, yeah. And you can, I mean, you can try different days and see what works best. Like, I don't, I don't think Friday was the day we started with. Hmm. Um, we just like eventually moved to that day. Yeah, yeah. So I think we were maybe doing it like on a Wednesday when we started and then we moved to Friday. Well, I, we covered a whole ton and yeah, I know like the whole milk it method, like may, I, I think on your website, don't you have like a whole deep dive on that? Like, cause I, yeah, there's a, there's a little PDF there that you can download about the milk up method. Uh, I mean, real quick, it's yeah. just milk stands for market idea, launch and ka -ching. So <laughs> it's really the kind of blueprint and the process that I've followed to first, I used it to create my agency and that postcard mailer. And then I used it to create offline sharks and, it's really a, a, a nifty thing because like when you, when you follow it, like you always know what to do next and, and usually growing and expanding or scaling, um, isn't about finding something new to do. It's about just doing the things you're already doing better or mm. doing them more. Right. So you can follow that framework of that milk framework to do just about anything, whether you're offering a service or launching a product, the kind of subtitle to it is it's the milk it method, how to turn any product, idea skill into a huge cash cow Ooh, right yeah but uh you know the thing is like the the podcast is something i started to kind of talk about how we've been growing offline sharks so like there's nothing really for sale over there like the milk it method isn't a way to get you on my list to sell you some big high dollar course or private code like i don't have any of that i really just wanted to put it out there because with 
everything that happened during the pandemic and all that stuff, people wanted that information. And I thought, well, if I can help people, like I've always really believed in that thing Jay Abraham said, mm-hmm. where it was like, if you know how to do something, you have a moral obligation to help the people behind you that are trying to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the stuff that you, if you go to my website or you go to offline sharks, um, Com, you'll see all, almost all of that stuff is just us showing how we've done certain things, hopefully to help other people be able to do the same things. Like mm. it's not rocket yeah. science, it's right? Not. Like, Hey, we tried <laughs> something it worked. So now here, look, we'll show you how to do it. I love it, man. We, we share some, such a similar philosophy and just mm. like, that's all. It's just been like a freaking bunch of experiments, throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks and mm-hmm. like, cool, yep. that worked. Let's do some more. Oh, cool. Now we have like three things on the wall. Let's keep building <laughs> on top of that. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, fun that just way. just go from there. And then you just share along the way. So, all right. So you have offlinesharks.com and, and tomgaddis.com, right? Yep. So, yeah. Perfect. And and that's T-O-M-G-A-D-D-I-S.com. But yeah, grab the PDF because that whole Milk It Method thing. I love the whole framework there. Yeah. I need to go buy some of your products so that I can uh, see these live streams on Fridays. And... <laughs> I was going to say the same. Yeah, I, I, we we want to do something similar, the, I think. Just come into the group. The group is free to join. Oh, it is? Okay, oh, cool. Yeah, I thought yeah, that was yeah. a customer go, group. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, yeah you, can, no, you can just go and request and they'll approve you. How do we get to the group? How do, I mean, uh, how does anybody get to the group? Just go on Facebook and look up Offline Sharks. Offline Sharks. And Perfect. you'll say Offline Sharks, yep. And you'll find the group and just request to join. They'll approve you and then you can watch the live shows on a... Yeah. They're, they're Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Eastern. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was going to say the same. <laughs> I was like, I just want to go study and, and yeah. see how you're running the show, man, or your yeah, team you runs can the see show. Some of the, you can see some of the re- the replays of the old episodes in there, too. Right on, man. Awesome. I love what you're doing. And the fact that you have a partnership and you're doing this very strategically, I mean, we'll be chatting again. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're very aligned in that <laughs> regard. Yeah, man. I, I love what you guys are doing. I appreciate you having me on the show. It's Thanks, brother. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's, uh, we'll do it again, my man. Thanks, Tom. Sounds good. Bye.